Hey guys, it's Car Guy Eleven. I'm here with my friend Jay, who's been a long. Okay, Car Guy Twelve. <laughs> or BMW man, how about that? There you go. BMW connoisseur here. Been on the channel a number of times with his BMWs, and this time we're in an EV. So this is the first first EV for you, right? Hell's frozen over. <laughs> This is the BMW iX, what, X-Drive 50? Mm -hmm. This is also BMW's first actual, truly dedicated EV platform. Well, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say first because the i3, well, the i3, I guess, was like a hybrid. Um, it was a weird car. Yeah, yeah. But this is truly all electric uh, from the ground up EV vehicle. So interested to get into it. As you guys know, I also drive an EV, the Mach-E. Haven't been in too many other EVs besides Tesla and uh, excited to get into it today and see how it drives and if it's worth $90,000. <laughs> Actually, it's $99,995. Wow, yeah, that's that's a lot, that's a lot. You do still have to press the start button, start stop button here in the center console and it has the dial like you're used to seeing with all of the other shortcuts around it. We're just in the standard drive mode right now. And what's strange is the steering wheel is not round and I can't even call it really a squircle either. <laughs> it's just multi, multi-faceted. So it feels a little odd in your hands, but get used to that, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Okay. So first of all, you hear the sound and you have that turned on, I guess. Is there different options? Yeah. But you change the modes, it changes the, the sounds for you. Okay. Um, but yeah, I didn't even floor it there and very quick off the line. Here we go. <laughs> so this is 516 horsepower, 564 pound feet of torque. It's all wheel drive, of course, and the rear motor is slightly more powerful than the front, which I like. That's the same as my Mach-E. So we'll see if we can feel that on these back roads here. <laughs> oh yeah, she moves. That's just in a standard mode too. Yeah, the, and the brakes, brakes. I, you know, I don't get a, I don't get a ton of um, regen. I have to hit the brakes for it to brake a lot. My Mach-E has more regen. Is this also adjusting the damping then? It will if you change the modes. Okay, let's let's go into the sport then. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the throttle is more responsive mm -hmm. as well. Correct. But yeah, there's some back roads here and it's doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, the steering feels nice and weighted as well. And these are big tires. 275 and they're like what 22 275 40 22 yeah and you get the optional sport appearance wheel and these are still all seasons right these are all seasons yeah okay yeah, i don't think bmw puts a summer tire only on, on these. these okay maybe on the m60 okay yeah there's even a, a step above this is an m60 with like over 600 horsepower I don't think you really need that. <laughs> this is plenty. This is like around four seconds here to 60 time. About that, yeah. The, uh, you know, BMW's always a little cheeky with their, their ratings. Let it go. Is it off? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's launch control. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I tell you what, it wasn't as violent as the Teslas, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. This thing just picks up speed like no problem. Now, I will say also in my Mach-E, over a certain speed, it does lose steam, and this one doesn't seem to be doing that. Now, this will pull all the way to its top speed, which is somewhere in the, I think, 120 or 130s. Yeah, this thing wants to keep going. Wow. <laughs> these, are, these are some nice, <laughs> nice open roads here. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it doesn't float over those undulations. It's pretty well damped. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a well-poised vehicle. I mean, they did a good job hiding the weight. Yes. But yeah, this vehicle is pretty cool. It, it, it does weigh a lot. It's 5,700 pound curb weight, but it actually has carbon fiber chassis. Uh, and you see that in the door frames and in the tailgate area. 
it's really amazing. So I believe it's aluminum frame with the carbon fiber right. over it. And um, batteries weigh a lot. And the batteries weigh a lot and they're down low, of course. So uh, you don't get a ton of lean, even though this weighs so much. It, it does feel lighter than it than it is. And that's actually typical of BMWs. They always mask their weight really well. <laughs> it looks, it feels like it gives you more power when the wheel's straight, or unless it was traction control kicking in. I don't feel the rear end wagging as much. Like the, my Mach-E, you can get that rear coming out pretty easy actually. But again, with the narrower tires and a lot of sticky rubber, that happens. I feel the car's really composed. Very composed, right? And that's, you know, typical BMW. And it's also you're kind of getting into the a different category of vehicle too. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. these are expensive to begin with. This is kind of leading in more to like the luxury side of the of the EV market, right? Yeah, the ride is really nice. Um, it has the adaptive suspension, but not the air suspension. I believe air suspension is an option. All right, so there is a very cool mode. It's called Relax, and it's playing this calm music and massaging my seat <laughs> at the same time it's so funny Your trip to the spa yeah like it all the modes are strange named except for sport it has the glass roof it it has a button where you can make it opaque and um just by a touch of a button so that's how you dim it uh that's pretty neat this thing was designed to compete against the, the model x long range you know, yeah. fin finish between the two, I don't think it's that much of a question who makes it better. Oh, uh, absolutely, so. absolutely. Now, I will say the materials are all sustaining, so that's not real leather. Mm -hmm. It's not, they're all like recycled materials. You will feel a difference between real, real leather and this, um, but that is what it is. Like I said, even my Mach E, it's not real leather. It, that's how most of these EVs, you really can't even get real leather anymore. This is about the size of a X5, right? Uh, yeah, it, it's a little smaller on the outside of an X5, but it's bigger on the interior side than okay. an X5. Yeah. But as far as, you know, best comparison, this is, you know, you, you compare this to an X5, is if you're cross-shopping them like I was, <laughs> cross-shopping this with an X5. The front doesn't open, there's no frunk. Just a little opening for the windshield washer fluid. But there is a little bit of bonus space under the floor in the hatch there. Yeah, it's meant for your 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 level two and your level one, level two travel charger. Mm -hmm. This vehicle also has all of the hands-free self-driving stuff. So I'm curious to see how that works. And uh, that's something fairly new for BMW. I mean, they had it with hands-on, but the hands-free, I think, is pretty new. All right, switch to normal mode. Going on the highway here. Let's set this cruise. And it says assist plus ready. So do I have to do anything else? Let, let your hands go. Okay. Assist plus. And it's, it has a beautiful heads-up display color, and it's really large. Uh, let's get the speed up a little higher. We're going around the bend here. This way? Yep. Okay. It's uh, navigating this left turn sweeper. I really love the hands-free self-driving. It it just makes it so much more comfortable, but I don't think you're a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it yet. <laughs> not sure I'm a fan of it yet. <laughs> does it do the lane change as well? I haven't tried it yet. I'm sure it does. Okay. That's one thing my Mach-E uh, doesn't have yet, but the, this next version of Blue Cruise that they're coming out with is supposed to do the lane changes as well. Let me turn the signal and see if it, no, it can kick me out of that okay. assist plus. Or maybe I, I shouldn't push it all the way. Okay. Let's see now. Yep, it's doing it. Um, you, can't, you can't hit it all the way down, just the, just it, the ones. You get ones come up here. Okay. So we'll 
we'll see if we can get it to go into the right lane. Yep, it's doing it. Very cool, very cool. All right, we're going to get off this exit, so I'll just touch the brake. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I know BMW has a good system, and I was waiting for them to get the hands-free part of it. I don't know what other models have the hands-free, but... The i5 will have it. Okay. Uh, and the i7 okay. also has it. So all the EVs. Uh, they are the, I guess what you call like the... The, the new EVs or the, the current gen EVs, like the i4, right, was kind of like a, a like a half generation behind. The other eyes are, you know, they have ICE engines and the EV, so they're not dedicated EV platform. Which I like this one because it's actually dedicated EV. Now this has a 105 kilowatt battery pack. Uh, so you have about 300 mile range, something like that. I think nice. BMW rates it about, uh, I think with the 22 inch wheels, it's 320 miles. Okay. The charging, you can get up to, what, 200 kilowatts? 195. 195 uh, on the fast charging, which is really good. Yeah, I was <clears throat> cross-shopping this in the, uh, the X550, which is the plug-in hybrid, and what really just pushed me toward this is one, okay, let's try an EV and two, this lease is about as much as an X3 does. Mm, yeah, so, because you're getting all the tax credits with the leases. Now, that's the trick, guys, with with the EVs anymore. It's pretty much just better to lease them. When I bought mine, that wasn't a, really a thing. But, like, with the you get the federal tax credit on most in most cases with the lease these days. So, even though this is a very expensive vehicle, like, close to 100000 uh, for some reason, all those other rules don't really apply to a lease. Correct, so, yeah. So that is the way to get around it these days. They may close that loophole eventually, but for now, that's that's how you get it. So how long is your lease? It's a 36-month lease. Okay. Uh, BMW is also buying down the rate. So the equivalent interest rate, once you convert the money factor, was like 1% wow. on this. So okay. and you're not getting it in the car loan. No, no, happening. yeah, but these days with the interest rates are so high, so, yeah, these, these are not cheap, but like I said, with the leasing option, it's not horrible, you know, but yeah, even at high speed here, the wind noise is great, I mean, it's very, very quiet in here, very quiet. It's very daily driver. Yep, not going to a gas station, uh, that part I love. It's just you're always starting with the full tank basically all right yeah it's it's handling these back roads really nice so no issues there i mean i like it um it's a fun fun ev for sure it's definitely more refined than my mach -E. handles better it's more power now of course there's the gt model of the mach -E that does give you the adjustable suspension feels really nice and solid all right well thanks jay for letting me check out your newest ride guys tell me what you think of the ix in the comments below would you consider an ev at this point oh yeah there we go <laughs> not even tire spill it's, it's handling this really well uh but anyway guys thanks for watching hope you subscribe for more and i'll see you in the next video